Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cactus Atlas. My name's Glenn, and today we're gonna be doing a little day trip up from Lassen Volcanic National Park in Northern California up to Lava Beds National Monument. Two and a half hour drive one way. All right, I'm doing a flip-flop of this itinerary I've been working off of this whole trip. And tomorrow was supposed to be the day I was gonna drive up to these lava tubes, leaving early. But that's really all one has time to do if you're staying here in Lassen because, because it's so far away. It's like two and a half hours away. You could probably find a closer campground, I'm sure, in the Mount Shasta area or something. But I didn't want to have to pick up camp again and just I wanted to plant my roots somewhere for several days so that's why I opted to do this. But I figured I'd take you up for the drive up there just in case we get some good views along the way but the main feature is going to be inside of these lava caves of varying levels of difficulty. Uh, which way do I go? <laughs> I need to pay attention. Part of my challenge here is there is no cell service at all like zero in many places up here, worse than anywhere else I've been actually. Um, so I need to plot a route to where we're going. I have a general starting point and I need to get some fuel because we're starting to run a little low to get up there. But I think I saw some gas stations along the way. Oh wow, so I'm, the landscape is really opening up now. And I see some of the recognizable mountains that we saw from Subway. So I'm hoping we get some views of Mount Shasta. I would think I would be able to see it right now if it was clear enough, but way up down the ways, I don't know if those are, if that's smoke from a fire or clouds, but um, I don't see Mount Shasta yet. I saw it for like three seconds yesterday on a break in the trees and it was absolutely beautiful. Way back coming up that road from Reno. So you would totally think it'd be like boom in our face right here, but it's not. But it is like 100 miles away from here. Shasta kind of fits in with our narrative today of exploring lava tubes, because this is a very volcanic area. You already got a hint of that, where we went to the subway lava tubes. I'm staying in Lassen Volcanic National Park, in which there was an eruption either in 1914 or 17 there. Uh, we're gonna learn about that a little bit more in different episodes, a lot of hydro, I'm sorry, geothermal activity in that park, steam vents, things like that. And now we're going up north to Lava uh, Beds National Monument where there are a huge collection of lava caves. So that just kind of gives you a sense that this is a very geologically active area. And I don't think it's done yet. I don't think we're done out here. What do you know? I actually see Mount Shasta. It's poking up like in between some hills over there, but it is kind of hazy. It's not as clear as what I saw before. You may not be able to see it, but as we get closer, I'm sure there'll be some points where we can go. And I realized I forgot to wash my windshield. So gosh darn it. So we got a lot of driving to do. We got an hour and 53 minutes to go. And there's so much to do and see there that I think I'm gonna just kind of help have Amy time warp us there. And we'll get a few more miles up the road and save some time. How does that sound? Well, we uh, have been driving for a while and I saw a sign up here for a scenic vista. 
and I had to just come and stop. We're overlooking the Pitt River. Give you your first little look at it here, your first little taste. Northern California views, folks. That is beautiful. I'm gonna have to zoom in with my other lens. But the interesting note here is there was a bridge down there built in 1928 as part of Highway 299, then known as the Yellowstone uh, Cutoff, which became too dangerous to maintain. And you see that little bridge way down there overlooking that beautiful um, waterfall and river, the Pitt River. I mean, this is a million dollar view. Now that is how you do a vista. That was a beauty. Overlooking the Pitt River and that old bridge. All right, we're gonna continue now on our way to Lava Beds National Monument. Anyway, so we've been driving a long time. I've not been talking, I've just been enjoying it. I'm trying to do less talking and more filming sometimes and to capture all that scenic drive. Uh, but let's check back in. We've got 56 minutes to go, so we're about a third of the way left for the whole journey. Our anticipated arrival time is 1.43 p.m. For me, being in these pine forests and seeing these big mountains and hills has really just been a good thing for me. One of the most enjoyable drives I've had in a very long time, actually, today. I could just do this whole episode in the car, I think, to make my life easier. I don't think I was prepared for how, I guess, unpopulated. I thought there'd be more pockets of little towns and things out here, but it is some of the longest stretches with nothingness which is magical. It's, it's actually a really good thing. We're actually about to enter in another national forest, so just like that, we'll probably see nothing but pine trees. This is the Modoc National Forest. Isn't this one of the regions where Bigfoot is supposed to be spotted? Northern California, Mount Shasta area, or am I off? I'm sure there are legends everywhere. But maybe we'll get lucky. I got the camera front mounted. So if we ever see a Bigfoot cross the road, we will be well prepared. Unless the GoPros are acting up or just taking long to sink and things like that. That would be just my luck. If I read right, Lava Tubes National Monument, the visitor center is open till four. You have to, I assume you have an entry fee, which you could use a National Parks Pass for, but they also have a, uh, you have to buy a permit for the day. Anybody can buy it, but they want you to buy a cave permit. So you pay and then you can go play as much as you want. And I forget how many caves total there are, but if you go to recreation.gov, you'll um, see they highlight three different levels of caves, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. I had picked out uh, on my itinerary several caves already. I'm going to do in that order. I didn't include any of the advanced caves, and I just for sake of time. But um, as we go scout it out, when they say advanced, maybe advanced doesn't mean as advanced as it might make one think. What's this thing? Are those cows? Or I thought I actually saw my first Bigfoot, that brown thing, but it's a whole herd of cows here. 
You be careful, guys. You're off. You're playing with danger. You're playing with fire. Thought we were gonna see a bear or Bigfoot or something, and it's cows. We see too many cows on this channel. Not impressed. I swear, too, these get taller and taller and taller. I feel like I should know what these things are. I know, like, we get comments from time to time with folks recommending I learn this stuff, and I agree 100%. Because I'd like to be able to speak more intelligently about it. Problem is, is time, you know, because I don't do this full time. So when I'm doing research and planning itineraries and, you know, doing that crazy, I was going to find my itinerary and, you know, I've talked about it on other episodes, but I do a lot of preparation, you can see, but it's just time is very limited. All right, I found a turnoff here for Lava Beds National Road Monument. Road 44 and 01. According to Google. These people need to slow down. They're going to hit me from behind. Is anybody else turning in here? Or am I the Continue only on road uh, 44 and 01 for three miles. cave explorer? 16 miles to the lava tubes. So nobody else turned in here. There's a big line of cars. I was sure they were following me. I wonder if that's a cinder cone up there, that bump on the landscape. It kind of has a, a look about it that makes me think it might be. But we're only two minutes away. According to Google, I just don't see where the heck we're going. Welcome, my friends, to Lava Beds National Monument. What a drive this has been. Here we are, folks. Lava Beds National Monument. Elevation 4,791 feet. I don't think that's even a mile. The starting point, of course, is in here. We'll see if there's a little museum. If not, maybe I can get a t-shirt or two. Um, and if not, I certainly want a cave permit because that's what we're going to be doing. And then the first thing we're going to be looking for is Mush Pot Cave. And I actually see it. It's right over this way. I see a sign for it. All right, I went in and I'm educated now so I can pass on my knowledge to you. Your National Parks Pass does cover your entrance fee and cave permit, so I didn't have to pay anything. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't know how much if the cave permit would be on top of it. Amy flashed up information up on the screen, but basically what they talk about, they'll give you a little lecture on um, white nose syndrome for bats, something we hear a lot about in Arizona and a lot of places get shut down because of that. They don't have any incidences of that here, but 40 miles away they do. Um, what else? So they want you to disinfect all your stuff. I have a helmet with me, which they also recommend, um, and three sources of light, which I have with me. Got everything. I am well prepared today. All right. We're descending into Mushpot Cave. Hopefully I don't need to bring a flashlight in here because I read on the internet they have lights. And they do. Ah, uh, that's correct. Oh, this is like a traditional cave experience, like at first here. You gotta bump, you gotta duck your head a little bit though. So what that sign is basically talking about is um, lava tubes are like the arteries for molten material. Like they're comparing it to our bodies, the circulatory system for when molten rock is flowing through things. And eventually it flows out and leaves these. I'm gonna tell you I have a low light camera, so this makes it look a lot brighter than it looks to my eyes. That's good for us, but this is nice. It's, it's actually quite a nice, experience and it's very cool I don't know if this is a one-way cave or 
like out and back kind of style. Some people were coming back the other way. The dark zone. Yes, it's saying basically if it wasn't for the artificial lighting, we'd be in complete darkness. This shows you some of the creatures that live in here. I think that's not exactly what Amy hates, but it's in the same area. At first, the cold, the cold air was refreshing, but the further we go down, the more cold it feels like it's getting, and I'm starting to get a little chilly. I was hearing some people talking in the visitor center that some of these caves still have ice in them now. So I might touch a rail and feel ice. So I need to, I brought sweatshirts and hoodies and things with me, so we'll be fine. But lots of bending down in here, more than I thought I was gonna have to do it first. And I see why they say wear a helmet. It's for people like me. They've got handrails too that help you on the ground, but I think this is the last assistance I'm gonna enjoy on this particular tour. This is long and extensive. Brr. Well, this is cool. They have, they have something called lava sickles, like cave formations, but lava formations. And I keep seeing these. Saw these in Subway Cave. You know what this is? This was the hot molten liquid magma as it was starting to drain. There's residue and it was dripping and it cooled quickly. So you're basically seeing liquid magma suspended forever, or oh, not forever, but <laughs> in stone for very long periods of time. So now we know those are called lava sickles. It's a good name. There are lots of lava sickles in this cave here. I think we may have found the end actually, just in time, because I'm cold. There's a dead end. And multi-level tubes, look up. It's split into two different levels. I don't think we're climbing though. And I can't see up, it's like pitch blackness, so. I didn't bring a flashlight, so up above me would have been a different level. The end? Your cave experience can continue. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what to expect here at this park. My mind is boggled, but this is the end of the road here in Mushpot Cave. But this Mushpot Cave is amazing. So if you're not adventurous enough to go with a flashlight from here in your own stuff, would I say it's worth the drive? Just for this, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't know what to recommend. So I asked the ranger up front how many caves are there actually here. There's about 900. <laughs> and apparently you can go in all of them. Some of them are very rugged though and remote. So they only advertise a set of them on the uh, website. I bumped my head already in Mushpot Cave of all places. <laughs> So the next one is Skull Cave. Our first that does not have uh, lighting in it. So we're gonna have to bring our spelunking pack with us. Now Skull Cave is supposed to have this really grandiose large opening and it's and a lot of people recommend it for that feature. I would say in the even in the station there was a patron before me in line and the ranger said, hey, if you can only do one thing that would be the one to go do so and it's also rated as beginner in on the website and in the literature they give you they recommend it also in there along with a couple other ones that are beginner and then for the intermediate ones they basically just say yeah just wear a helmet and you're probably fine because there are some parts where you really have to get down and i already bumped my head in mush pot in one place i'm 6'2 so i don't do well with like low ceilings You'll get a really good view of this. I should probably take my time and read because, I mean, I bet you that's Turn a right. cinder cone. And there's a sign for Skull Cave. Sounds ominous, but I think it's because they found, I'll read the literature, but I think they found skulls in there of animals or something in there. And that's why it got its name. So it's a little spooky. 
Interesting. So mush pot was 770 feet in length, 235 meters. Skull cave is shorter. It's 580 feet and 177 meters. This wide open feel of this cave makes it an excellent choice for those who do not like tight, closed in spaces. It's a rem remnant of three very large lava tubes, one on top of the other. So this allows cold winter air to be trapped inside and create a year round ice floor on the lower level, accessible via a smooth trail down a metal stairway to a platform. It's named for the bones of pronghorn, bighorn sheep and two human skeletons discovered inside. Two human skeletons. Whoa. All right. I think I'm ready. I made some way, somewhat of a bonehead error. I left my two headlamps at the campsite. God dang it. But I do have plenty of other light sources. They're just all handheld is the, the main thing. So I'm no, not short on that. I've got construction lights. I've got, got it all. I just like the headlamps because I can aim my head to aim the light. And that big handheld flashlight's what I'm going to use. I'm going to skip the helmet on this one and take my chances. But I also think there's going to be plenty of other people in here. I saw them go down, so I think other people can light the way for you. That's not good advice, though, so don't listen to me. Okay. Holy moly. You see this? You seen what I'm seeing? Might be hard for the camera to get in there with the contrast right now, but soon you will see. Soon you will see. Oh, it's so cold too. This is spectacular. This is the uh, Carlsbad Caverns of Lava Beds National Monument, I think. This particular one. Down into the darkness where they found dead people. We're going in some 580 feet or something like that. I already forget. 500 something I know for sure. Look how light the light just ends. Almost like there's a thick wall of darkness here. to tell you know I can see better with my camera <laughs> than with my own eyes in here but the ceiling is really tall that's my flashlight beam god this flashlight sucks so bad this is gonna make today a little difficult Let's see what other options I have those construction lights now that's what I need to bring in the next one because I'll have no problem seeing there's like a second level somewhere in here. I think we're coming up on it. There's more people too. Oh, that's pretty far down there actually. Look at that. They're helping illuminate this for me. This is a steep stairway here. I almost want to go back and get a construction light. I might as well be down here with candlelight at this rate. like a horror game. surroundings. It's really lame for a flashlight this big to suck this bad. <laughs> That's all I brought with my hand cranker. And I guess if, if worst case happened, I would wait for the next person to come down and lead me out. But it's 
worrisome with this stupid thing. Are we on the floor yet? Where does the trail go? We're still going down. I wasn't prepared for how deep this thing is. This is the end, I think. We made it officially to the end of Skull Cave. The Skull Cave ice floor is in here. Where are you, ice floor? I can't see a dang thing. <laughs> I can't see a damn thing with this. Anyway, you can see, you can see right there, the Skull Cave ice floor, somewhere in there. But this thing doesn't make enough light for the camera to focus on. Honestly, Walmart, you should be ashamed for selling junk this bad. This is horrible. Granted, I paid like 10 bucks for it or something, but it's worthless. And now I have to, there's no other people in here. What is this? That's worrisome. There's like a big iron support <laughs> like right up here. But let me turn off the light. I mean, it's pitch blackness. I am far down under the earth now. I'm kind of freaked out. Because this is like a horror game where you have like some crappy flashlight and you're trying to figure out how to get out. And now we have to go up these really steep stairs again. I almost want to have a redo with better lighting. But maybe this adds to the ambience. It looks blurry though because I can't focus on anything because the light sucks. <sighs> Alright, we'll uh, make our way here. Out and we'll face this way now. Because this actually is... still need my flashlight so I could see where I'm stepping, but... If I look straight ahead, I don't. The ground's a little, like, cobblestone-like and uneven. So that's why I'm keeping my eye on that, but... I mean, this gets an A+. I just feel like I missed out by not being able to illuminate that descent. Oh, well, there's always a next time. It's an experience coming out to the light out of that dark cave like that. It's blinding, because your eyes adjust. But we'll look back and reminisce. Having the crappy flashlight made it exciting, but horrible for filming. My sincere apologies, but I don't have time to do a redo. But we have many more caves to explore. I'm probably not doing these in the most efficient order. I'm heading to Valentine Cave now, which is on the way out, the way we came in. But the reason why I'm choosing to do this is because I, you know, I'm kind of ranking them in order of difficulty in my mind. Valentine is ranked among the beginner caves, but it's also a lot longer than um, any of the caves we've done so far. Mushpot was the longest at 700 some odd feet. This one's like 1600 feet in length, maybe more. Let's see, I've got a little thing here that tells us. 635 feet in length. It has stairs and steps, but it also has um, places where you have to duck, and it says most people need to duck walk. My favorite. So if I'm being tall, I'm gonna have to duck walk. So this might be the first one where I wear a helmet. And in fact, I think it says if you wanna do the whole cave and get to the end, you have to crawl maybe, or most people have to crawl. And that's today where I'm cutting the line, because if you have to crawl, you typically, like they say in the paperwork they want, you should have knee pads and gloves because the rock is really abrasive and it's not like smooth. <laughs> so the, it's easy to walk on, but yeah, it's not something I think I'm going to do unless it's a quick crawl. We'll survey when we get there, but this time we're going to go in armed with better lighting. All right, we're at Valentine Cave, the first one of the day that says we need to duck, although Mushpot required some ducking. Might be extreme wearing this, but I'm, I'm gonna hit my head. Brought four of these bad boys this time. Construction lights, they're battery powered, but I've used these before to illuminate a tunnel, the Burrow Schmidt Tunnel. Maybe this is a good time to plug that video and you'll see these in action in there. But it worked really well. Now where the hell is this trail? It's taking, oh, is it right here? It's like right by the parking lot, you can't even tell. I think we're about to go down into the depths already. It's dark, like right off the bat. <laughs> There's not much light that gets in here. I'm looking forward to the coldness though, because I'm hot. All right. So far, it's really big. Like, almost like not quite as big as the subway. But there's also 
two different ways to go. I'm gonna go to the left because the light shines better here. Probably just all ends up going to the same place. Now we got something to do. Let me get this situated here. See what I'm saying? I'm not playing around anymore. No, sir. I'm throwing that Walmart trash in the trash. Hopefully I don't blind people though. With this. There's people coming. Let's study the ceiling for that lava sickles. Hello. Hello. The floor is very uneven in this one, the most uneven floor of them all. But let me show you why I wanted to have these construction lights in here. Because now we can be badass. <laughs> now we can be badass, that's about it. I could set that down and I can even walk a ways without having to hold the light and get some cool shots of me walking into the darkness. With my shadow, look at the shadow. How cool is that? All right, so I was just kind of playing around with this and setting it down to see how well I can illuminate with just one. I have, I think I brought three with me. I think I have a fourth in the car. Couldn't see, find it immediately though, so. Um, this is amazing. trying to kind of get a shot and walking, but this floor is crazy. There's a lady having a really hard time walking on this. She said she felt like she'd have help. So make sure you got good balance, I guess. It doesn't bother me at all, but it looks like it's kind of wet in here too. I think I'm probably the only one left in here now. I'm warm because I brought my warm sweater. It doesn't feel as cold as Mushpot did though so far. Whoa, this goes in different directions. <laughs> Which way should we go? I don't feel like crawling right now. And this is wet. It's not slick though, it feels like rock. We're gonna just keep going. This thing goes back, like I said, 1600 feet. So we got a ways to go. I tested out my wind-up flashlight, my, the flashlight I would use for a catastrophic failure of equipment, and that is still operational. Whoa, now I'm getting to the point where I'm just staying to the left, that's my policy. And on the way out, I'll just stick to the right. I think that should work out, right? Here's where I think we have to duck. Yeah, this is getting really low in here. This is where they say most people have to duck walk. Looks like it opens up again in here though. There, I, hit, I caught my backpack and I hit my head. <laughs> and it's very wet in here. I hear water dripping in fact. Oh, this is kind of scary. Again. Yep. <laughs> Brought construction lights this time. <laughs> yeah. It goes in a little bit ways and then you gotta almost get on your knees. Yeah, at that point I'm stopping. That's what I did. I went down, you can go down a little ways and then, yeah. it gets, then there's a part where yeah, I wouldn't go. It's, gotcha. It's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm loving it. Have fun. Yeah, you too. Thanks. It's kind of freaky, especially being in here alone. You know, but I'm prepared. But it's, you know, if you twist an ankle or something or really hurt yourself, you could. Here's where the ground's really uneven. You see that? So it's kind of a thrill, I would say. And this is considered beginner friendly. <laughs> but yeah, not. I'm missing the headlamp immensely. And more lava sickles. These are really like, it almost looks like slime, doesn't it? I can't do this with 
Both hands are occupied, but it's so shiny. Probably a little wet. And there's some, I'll look at some of those there, get some better lighting on that. It's fantastic. Now this is a lot of POV in here, but you know, here's the part I think he said it starts to get really tough. I think I'm duck walking again and I see up ahead what might look like a uh, smaller chasm. So I'm gonna actually just kind of turn around in this one and we're gonna make our way to the next one. But this is amazing. And we'll just kind of hang out. Come on, focus. We'll hang out in here deep underground. It's amazing how cool these places are. And really haven't seen any animals or anything scary down here yet. No ghosts. But I do see my camera's having a hard time focusing at times, so I apologize if it's a little blurry because I have to got a light in one hand, camera in the other, and then I'm watching my footsteps below because the ground is so uneven here. Yeah, my hesitancy to do the more advanced caves is right there. I see it already. You could lose your way. There's a lot of caves that have, you know, twisting like figure eights and other areas where you could walk in circles. And they warn you about that in the, uh, the pamphlet. So it's like I'm using some basic sticks to the left on the way in and on the way out on the right on the way out. But I saw lots of twists and turns even in here, but it seems like everything joins up with the main tunnel on this one, but that's not always the case. So I'm not studied up enough to do something too crazy. You could see with like two or three construction lights, you could do a pretty cool effect if I set them up at different spots. I think we'll save that for the next cave we visit. Um, but for now, I just wanted to test to see the viability of using this as a handheld lighting device and it has proven its worth. I'm also almost done with this battery. I've got one bar left and this is not a good place to try to change batteries in a camera and then balance a gimbal. So we're gonna shut it off and make a beeline for the exit so I can get a fresh and full battery for the next cave. All right, Valentine Cave. I feel like we didn't explore the whole thing, but that's all right, because it was awesome for what it was. Our next stop is called Sunshine Cave. I wanted to bring a little bit of happiness into all the gloom here. Um, this next cave is rated as intermediate, so we're about to go up a level in terms of complexity. Um, the only thing I didn't, I avoided in there was more duck walking and stuff, mainly to save time. I'm not afraid to go in there all the way, but I just don't have time. And I've learned, I didn't even think about knee pads. So um, in fact, they even say, don't even try the intermediate caves without knee pads. I'm sorry, not intermediate, but the advanced. And I think that's why, is they pro that's probably the differentiator is having to crawl versus not. And everything else they, they classify as, do you need to duck walk? They have a, I'll show you when we park the information. It's really helpful actually. Man, the only thing I'm thinking now, it's already four o'clock and I can't believe that I've been here as long as I have. You know, the time is flying. It, I'm, it's such a thrill, I think time goes by faster. And now I'm getting bummed because I am having the time of my life today. Um, and I want to do more and more, but I'm almost wondering if I have to make this our last one. And if it is going to be our last one, at least we will have done an intermediate level cave. It's a short one. It's only 400 some odd feet. Um, but there's a reason why I think this one's supposed to be pretty cool. All right, sunshine. Hopefully you are a ray of sunshine in our life today because you're gonna be our last cave on the tour. But if I'm correct about this, it will be a worthy one to enjoy. All right, there's a bat species that live in here. But this is Sunshine Cave and it looks pretty small. All right, so if this lives up to my expectations, folks, here's the game we're gonna play. There's a video game I love called Skyrim. And in Skyrim, there are these I know our demographic doesn't really watch video games, but 
If you remember my references to Fallout in a previous episode, same video game in a medieval type setting, just to oversimplify it. They have these places called dungeons all over the place, these areas you explore, caves that you have to go in and battle all sorts of grisly and terrifying things. <laughs> I'm really psyching myself up here. But basically in the game, I always there were a lot of levels that had light shining through the cave ceiling and it's, it's kind of beautiful. This I think has that kind of thing in one place or maybe more than one place, light, sunlight poking through. So that's why I wanted to see this one. Now, unlike the video game Skyrim, those games give way too much credit to how much lead natural lighting a cave like this would have. It's pitch black. So obviously that wouldn't make for good gameplay. Someone should like create a RPG that it, it, it just uses light mechanics and like real darkness and stuff. And you have to have torches and you don't want your torches to run out. That'd be frantic, but let's switch light mode on. And already I can see too that this cave is a lot more, uh, it's got, it's not flat. So this is probably why they give it intermediate. I just don't know how slick this stuff is yet. Now I'll put this one to the test. It grips okay. I've got new shoes on, but they're running shoes. I meant to wear my hiking boots for ankle support. And I'm another failure. Okay. I see natural light already at the other end. So you wouldn't be happy without a flashlight though, because you'd be tripping a lot. But that is probably why it gets the name Sunshine. But we're deep inside here again and we see more lava sickles. I, that's the thing I like the best, I think, is this stuff. It's like, I was not expecting that, how almost metallic it is. And it's just frozen magma that was, it dripped and it cooled that fast, you know? But it would have been like red hot liquid magma. And if you had a time machine like H.G. Wells time machine style, where you kind of travel time, but you occupy the same space, I don't think you'd want to be in here at the wrong time when this was formed. How frightening, I mean, I don't know, you'd be instantly vaporized. Like I'm inside the intestines of some foul creature. Oh, uh, here's a duck walk. Quack, quack. And look, it's like spikes, like you're in an Indiana Jones movie, and now those will come down and crush you and kill you. You definitely don't want to hit your head on that. I can tell you, they're, they're sturdy things. They're not uh, brittle. All right, almost at the light. Almost at the light, and I'm duck walking and duck walking. I did it, I did it, I did it. And let's see what we got here. Oh, there's even a trail. But yeah, see, you got these holes of natural light that make it nice. And then there's more over here. In fact, you know, come around here. Like this is kind of Skyrim-esque to me. Little holes that illuminate dungeon caves like that. And we got a bridge. Imagine this was a wooden bridge and then it'd be Skyrim. <laughs> All right, I made it without hitting my head yet. I've only had two head bumps today. Oh, wow. This is a little paradise. There's even greenery down here. See, I've seen some others videos, so that's how I knew this. But isn't this totally like that? You have moss and stuff, or out like lichen growing on the rocks and leafy green plants here and like moss or something. I mean, that's what made me think of Skyrim. Wow. So maybe we should start a petition, all of you out there that I know like games like Skyrim. I know there are some of you. We need to petition to rename this to Skyrim Cave, not Sunshine Cave. Although, Sunshine Cave, there's nothing wrong with that. But for those in the know, you know what to call it from this day forth. Now let's go see if there's any treasure back in this place. Or trolls. <laughs> Hopefully not of the internet sort. Hopefully there's no 
uh, necromancers down here. Or vampires or bad things. But now I'm, I don't know if there's gonna be more sunshine yet or if this is all the sunshine there is. Cause this doesn't look very sunny in here. This is very deep and very uh, a little thrilling I'd say. Most thrilling one I've done today. Tight quarters too. I'm a little claustrophobic at times. So I don't really like the tighter ones as much. But we'll see what we can do about it. We're gonna be brave. We're gonna be brave. Did I find the end actually? Oh, there is something here. What the heck is that? I'm gonna say something else. You have to crawl, but I'm trying to use my camera to look through. I'm not crawling, not with all this equipment today. I think I'm gonna call it. That's the end of the line for me. Let's head back to the light. All right, back to the light we go. See, Skyrim, I'm telling you. If they ever have to make Skyrim the movie, this is a, should be a film location. Although they have to make the floor a little bit smoother and make it easier for people like me to walk up. Duck crawl. Oh no. Now you see the hazards. I think the camera's okay, miraculously. It landed lens down and the black section around it took the damage, but I don't see any scratches. I'll have to inspect it more carefully later. But I took a tumble on sharp volcanic rock and it sucked. It sucked bad. My knee hurts, but I'll be fine. Let's get that out of here. Whew. My heart is beating <laughs> from adrenaline and from having to do this. Going out, it's kind of uphill the whole way, slightly, and then sections like this. We'll survey the damage out here in the sunlight to myself and the camera, if any. All right, sunshine. <laughs> you were a little cruel but I take the blame. I mean, I should not have uh, rushed. And just taking my time, take the backpack off, set it in front of you, that kind of thing. But I always tend to rush and rush and rush because I'm trying to get so much done in short time frames and have my tight itineraries. And then you make mistakes sometimes. But luckily, as far as I still can tell, everything seems okay. Might have to preview some footage though later and see. Ah, sunshine. <laughs> I'm gonna end this episode pretty much where we started off in the car, mainly because there are these bees and all this stuff trying to get in the car. I was gonna try to film an outro in there for you, but, or outside the car, but uh-uh. So anyway, that was really cool. Um, I didn't get to do everything I had planned on though. We're one cave short of my plan, but it's already, that took about 45 minutes and to get back in the car and get settled. My arrival time to get back to my campground um, where we started our adventure this morning is 7 15 p.m like right around sunset or right after sunset and i gotta eat dinner and do all this stuff so i this just wet my appetite to come back to this area and to come back more prepared and have more time that's my biggest note is have more time because there's doing a half day here doesn't do it justice we just barely skim the surface well you know the time the time has come we have to part ways but that was a pretty epic drive up here i hope that it came out good and Hope this stuff came out good. Um, come back next week for more if you enjoyed this one. Subscribe if you haven't, and until then, happy trails.